and we're back with some more prison architect. And I believe we're about to bring in a whole bunch of new prisoners. We've got one, two, three, we've got 400 spaces up here. we got 400 spaces down here. Though I need to start doing guard patrols. I've been informed. If you don't have patrols set up, the guards just sort of hang around in reception or wherever. They don't actually go around and patrol the areas. That's why the prisoners would be having fights and no one would come to interfere. So we need to do a whole bunch of patrols. For example, on, say, this place here, this yard, we need to make sure that during work free time, which is when they could be using the yard for exercise and all that, between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., and 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., we need to have guards patrolling each of our yards. Uh, for the canteens, we should probably have a guard in each canteen patrolling between 1 to 3 p.m. and 9 to 10. This, this can be arranged. The problem with doing this, though, is there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 4, 5, 6, um... That's just six right there. Then we have another six over here, six over there, and six over there. Right, this... We're going to need to start hiring some more guards to make sure we've got decent patrols going on. Next step up, we're going to put guards patrolling all of the canteens. All uh, six, twelve, twenty-four of them. All twenty-four canteens between one to three and nine and ten, which is when all of the prisoners are eating. And uh, then we've got to do another patrol. This one, though, is going to be in front of these things, the metal detectors. You see, when it comes to dogs, dogs can detect smelly stuff. So if we go under intelligence here, this will tell us where people steal things from. So knives, forks, spoons. These are all weapons. They all get stolen out of kitchens. And then they pass through the metal detectors and they hopefully get caught. However, inside these areas, they can't steal any drugs or anything like that. To get drugs, they have to come down here and either go into the hospitals or the offices, stuff like that. So they can't, so if they want to bring those back to the room, which is where they consume everything, they have to go past these areas here, also put some past metal detectors, and we will also be putting them past dog patrols. So we'll have dog patrols running at every single entrance to every set of cell blocks. So that will be one, two, three, four. There'll be eight sections where we'll have to put dogs just to make sure that we don't have any problems with the contraband getting in. Otherwise, this leads to drug overdoses and deaths. On top of all of that, we've had to put patrols into the churches because lots of people keep getting shanked in there. Uh, yeah, churches, who knew? Also, we got to make sure that there's patrols in all of the parole offices because a lot of people get stabbed in there when they get refused the parole. That should be about it. We're going to need a lot more guards to patrol this area, so a bit more staff, I'm thinking. We've got 82 guards. Let's crank that up to about 100 for now. Uh, a bunch of those are going to need to get their taser certification, so let's get them in now before we get in the rest of the prisoners. Uh, but I'm thinking... Just wait a minute. Oh, and when it comes to deployments and... Where is it? Cooks. Signing cooks. We have assigned out three cooks to all of our kitchens to make sure everyone's getting fed. Uh, at the same time, we've even brought in a few extra cooks. We need 72 kit cooks to keep this all running, and we've got a few extras just so that they can rest. So we've got 84 cooks. We are not allowing any prisoners into the kitchens to help cook, because that's how they get their hands on knives and stuff. And, yeah, let's, let's, let's worry. I have no problems paying staff just to feed the prisoners, so we don't have to worry about them stabbing each other. It just cuts down on our difficulties. Oh, and I still have to put in a few more carpets. We've made sure every place has been assigned common rooms, yards, kitchens, dormitories, infirmaries, all that stuff. That's all should have been assigned out, though I think I'm missing a few prayer mats here and there. We have assigned guards to pretty much every area where I think there's going to be trouble. I say think because I'm not sure. We have also made sure that most of the prisoners are getting their food. I don't see anyone with massively bad needs for food. Okay, five prisoners desperately want some food. They'll be fine, they'll figure it out. See, I'm worried about some cross-pollination between, say, areas up here trying to come down for infirmary or parole hearings and stuff like that, so I'm trying to leave some decent, wide thoroughfares of transit, just in case prisoners need to go... Yeah, see, those prisoners, what what are they doing coming down here? And where are you going? Like, for example, that prisoner came all the way over here to use this yard. I have no idea why. Like that... And this guy came over to use the weight bench. They should really be sticking to closer by stuff. Presumably, though, once we fill this prison, it'll cause less issues. Uh, that's the hope. I think we'll just go to intake and we'll crank it up by, say, another eh, 50 people. Yeah, 50 more prisoners in here. Then we'll see how that goes and we'll keep cranking up some more. We can, in theory, go up to 800. So let's see what happens as we slowly crank up. I want to see where the cracks start to appear. I know there's going to be some issues with expanding something this much. This seemed to work fine, half of it. But doubling it... Uh, I just, I kind of expect something to break. We're about to get in those prisoners, and I think I'd like to make a few changes here. You see, we've expanded out a bunch of our infrastructure. 
So we need to stop all of these programs. But we've got a whole bunch of new educational programs we need to do, so we want everyone lined up on the same schedule. We want, say, all of our Alcoholics Anonymous meetings to happen at the same time in four different locations, so each one of them goes to the closest common room, as opposed to trekking halfway across the prison. Uh, same for our chapels, spiritual guidance, uh, behavioral therapy, all that stuff. That all needs to happen in the one spot. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up, I suppose. Uh, you. Spiritual guidance. Yeah, we'll go with four classes of you. Actually, we might have to crank it up to eight. There's a fair few in the queue. Yep, there we go. Four of you. Uh, then it's just going to be less. I'm not building a workshop. Workshops have lots of tools in them. People end up getting stabbed. No. I don't even want them making anything. I want these prisoners preferably doing nothing that makes them interact with other people. I want them in the rooms as much as possible, and if I could get away with walling them in there forever, that would be the much safer option. So no power tools, no, I don't even need it for the money. The money we're fine on. If, if we needed money, I'd think about it, but no thank you. There we go. We've got spiritual guidance in the church to make them better at getting parole. Uh, then we got loads of parole hearings, alcoholic group theory, therapy, ah, therapy. Uh, four of those, uh, pharmacological treatment of drug addiction, then a whole bunch of behavioral therapies for our more violent offenders, uh, general education qualifications, which has to be preceded by foundational educational programs. Then we have actually a whole bunch of kitchen safety and hygiene. Didn't really want to let them in the kitchen, but a little bit of training, like just in the morning between 8 to 10, why not? Hopefully that should help them get more parole or increase our parole success. And here come our newest batch of prisoners. Should be about 60 of them. And who is causing problems? Mine, it seems you've caught already. Eh, uh, how we doing? They're gonna have to be sent over to processing, where they will be immediately searched. Uh, preferably quickly. I put a whole bunch of patrol people in here just to make sure everything gets processed as quickly as possible. We're gonna be bringing in another bunch of people later on. Hey. Right. In fact, let's crank up the intake again. We'll make that 450 if you wouldn't... or 500. I mean, I should go slower. I should give it a few days to make this stabilize, but I'm an impatient person, and we want more prisoners. Not only the money, I just want to see if this breaks or not, and how badly. Uh, still getting the odd incident in the church. Uh, sorry about that spiritual leader. Oh, yeah, that, that guy's a totally rabbi-looking guy. Do they need prayer mats or do they need pews? You know what? This doesn't make a difference. So long as, yeah, so long as it works, and the guards keep the violence to a minimum. Killed for being a snitch. Well... Snitches get stitches. I mean, what's the point in making a protective custody for the snitches when, so long as we just let them die as they come in, we don't have any mass deaths. Mass deaths is all we worry about. If a few snitches come in, they get killed off. That's grand. A uh, couple other deaths. What was it? Let me guess. Another snitch. Killed for being a snitch. Okay, so the newer snitches. We're just going to make sure we don't bring in too many people. The new snitches come in. The new snitches get killed. And then we bring in some more people. And then those snitches get killed. And so long as we don't get more than about, I think it's... 15, 20 deaths in a day, there's no harm, no foul. I mean, we could make an entire wing to try and keep them safe or something, but that just seems like that would be more effort than just letting the, you know, prison nature take its course. Here comes our next batch of fresh recruits. Uh, hopefully there's not too many snitches and ex-cops and stuff in there. Yes, I figure so long as we keep taking them in at low enough rates, it shouldn't cause us any difficulties. We'll just cap out at 500 for a bit, then we'll go 550, then we'll go 600. Yeah, yeah, there's probably going to be a bunch of you that won't survive, but hey, new fish, always happens. And why are there still people in the holding cells? Those people should be assigned out to normal cells by now. We have so many free cells for everyone. The chapel continues to be the favorite place for snitches to get stitches. Um, yeah, it seems like this is just... What the hell? We used to have 500 people. No one died. I think our parole people are just a little bit too good at getting people paroled. And why is there no guards in there? There should be a guard in every single parole office when paroles are happening. Otherwise, the parole officers keep getting shanked in the neck with their own knives. They keep bringing fountain pens, and they get stabbed with said fountain pens. And no one thinks, hey, you know what? Maybe just switch to something else. Don't bring fountain pens. Bring something less stabby. Ah, there goes another one. Yeah, this is actually a pretty... like We could set up prisons to safeguard certain types, but it doesn't seem to affect the game. So I'm not sure why we should. Maybe there's some other mutators we have to put on to make it more dangerous to us. As far as I can tell, getting rid of the snitches just makes our lives easier. Um, and we have just a bunch of prisoners who don't want to kill each other. Just, uh, I can't see the motivation for keeping them safe because we have no financial incentive to do so. I'm not trying to be evil here. It's just in, from an efficiency point of view, what's the point of trying to keep them safe when it's just going to lead to more difficulties? Instead, let them take care of the, let the problem take care of itself and we don't have to worry. 
All right, and uh, this is our high security section. So far, no real problems with it. Huh. I'm not even sure why half of these are in high security. Why are you here? So from what I can see, they were only involved in one violent incident. It's been explained to me that we don't get any high security prisoners or maximum security prisoners. We only get medium. And then if they do bad things, they get upgraded to, ma to max security. Uh, well, fair enough. That we'll just have to figure out how to cure them or get rid of them or parole them or let them get snitched. Uh, who's that guy? Oh, parole officer got got. Yeah, whatever. They're free. And here's a new batch of fresh meat. I've expanded the reception area substantially to deal with it, and we've moved our power generation indoors. It's just nicer. Everywhere now has power generation built into the block, so this block here has its own independent power generation, so does this. Each one is own independent generator. The only thing that's not independent is the water pump station. Uh, which reminds me, how much are those water stations? That might be an idea. Five grand? You know what? We could afford it but I don't think I'm going to do it. We'll leave that water pumping station there. We'll worry about complications with that later on, which is probably a bad idea. Anyway, so far we'll let them all spread out. We'll wait until the next batch of snitches get killed in the chapel today, and then we'll crank it up and bring in a whole bunch more people. Uh, what are we up to at the moment? We should be set to 550. Yeah, we got 550 on the intake. We'll give it a day. Let, let them weed out the ones they don't want. Then we'll up it to 600 and keep repeating until we hit 800. Oh, damn it. Some of them are surviving, at least the first attempt, so... That's just going to drag it out until the next day. It doesn't matter. We'll heal him up and we'll let him loose again and see what happens. But I think... Yeah. One more day. We'll wait until the morning and then we'll bring in a bunch more. Ooh. This one's a snitch and an ex-prison guard. Oh, that is just... No. Snitch and ex-prison guard. That guy wasn't going to last the night. That is just... Ooh. We're actually pretty stable. We're up to about 600 prisoners. Well, minus the ones that get paroled and are shanked. But by and large, it seems to be going pretty well. Let's crack this up to 650. I'm doing it at 50 at a time just to keep the amount of shankings to a minimum. We don't want to have too many and trigger some sort of negative uh, effect for the prison. Uh, Food-wise, I still end up with some people ending up starving. I don't know if it's, it takes them so long to get to food or something like that, but it tends it's not rising, and it tends to go down, occasionally spike up a little bit, uh, especially when we get new intakes. So that's why I'm kind of slowly cranking things up. People who are hungry go into the red, and any of those... Any of these bars that start going red cause problems. Like recreation going red, that's not good. That's probably people though trapped in solitary confinement. Who should be being fed. The prison guards are supposed to bring them food. At least, I think they are. Right now, we have a bunch of active parole hearings. Now, what I want to point out is the amount of money it brings in. See, when this line gets all the way to the end, these parole hearings will finish. Some of them will get pardoned, some of them will not, but we'll get a, a cash bonus. The thing is, the cash bonus doesn't show up under your daily cash flow, and it is substantial, especially when you have a prison this large with this many people. In fact, let's just check something here for a moment. Uh, we are at 798 prisoners minus a couple due to unforeseen circumstances. Well, foreseen, but uncared about. Uh, one second. Then parole hearings are just about finished, and oh, where is it? Early release, prisoner award, 12 grand. So between all of the rooms, we got about 12 grand worth of... Oh, there's another one for 3,000. That's 1,500. We just made 1,500 on the early release program from paroling prisoners. You get a big cash bonus for reforming people. That's a fair chunk of change. And as well as that, we get to do two parole hearings a day. So now we're on to the 10 to 2 p.m. parole hearings, which means at the end of this, we'll get another bunch, bunch of cash. Let's have a, a quick check and see how that works out. And should be passing through right about now. Some of them might go a little bit over time. Uh, where are we? There we go. 15 grand in early release. Nice. So we just made 30 grand from release. Actually, wait, no, there's another three grand. Ugh, 33 grand. We've made 33 grand this day, all from just releasing prisoners early. And that means we just bring in more prisoners at the end of the day. You can see it up here. So the prisoner numbers have good down. We're going to bring in 13 more. Like, any snitches and all that stuff will be disposed of, and then we'll just keep paroling people. And everyone's going through and doing classroom stuff. Uh, we've got some people learning to use the kitchens, but not working them. Chapels, classrooms, uh, psychologist sessions, all that stuff. And it's all helping them become better so that they get are more likely to get paroled. For example, let's just grab a random prisoner. Uh, you, what's your grading? You have a 76% re chance. 
Reformation, that's going to keep going up. Punishment should keep going up as we keep locking people up at night. I've changed the regime just a little bit here so that everyone gets three blocks of lockup every day just to increase their punishment. I suppose that we, if you find someone who has maxed out on everything but punishment, we can just put them in solitary for a few days just, just to make sure that their punishment goes up high enough. Now, 800 prisoners is what we're currently set to. We've got all the capacity. Everything seems to be holding up and everyone's needs are good. I'm not really seeing any problems, to be honest. As far as I can tell, 800 people handled. We're getting a 70 grand a day cash flow. We haven't had a an incident in 127 days. And by incident, uh, I think that means escape. I don't think it cares about people dying, snitches dying, parole officers dying, even guards dying. The only thing it seems to care about is whether or not a prisoner escapes. Otherwise, it doesn't care. Hmm. So I'm thinking, let's try some maximum security. I mean, this is, we got plenty of money. Uh, in fact, how much is this prison to sell if we went for valuation? Okay, we got a little bit of a penalty because there was uh, a few minor inconveniences in the past 24 hours due to snitches. And that was like, that was their own fault, to be honest. So we've still got about 4.2 million. Yeah, we could definitely rebuild a, a massive uh, jail. But I'm thinking we go over here. We go over here and put maximum security on the opposite side. Or we could keep going left. See, going left might be prettier. First things first, though, we could probably knock out a bunch of these, like cell block, raise your prisoner capacity to 50. I think can be ranged uh, 100. Yeah, can also be ranged 200. Yeah, 500. I think we got all of those. Max sec infrastructure implementation. Hmm, increase the size of your security force. Ah, this should be fairly handy. Though we do have to clean up a few of these first. Oh, also, we still have 757 family members waiting to visit. That is, um, that's a lot. I don't want to set up visitation rooms. Hopefully it's not required. Uh, build a visitation room, add at least three visitor tables. Build a common room, add a pool table. Uh, you know what, we can knock this out fairly quick. Well, we managed to knock out most of the grants, except for the ones that we're not bothered with. Inmate nutrition, turn up and down their meals. I, I don't care. I presume that's to see how well it goes. Uh, this guy is going to beat up his cell. At some point, someone will come along and notice. Actually, what's this? Guard response. I am i don't know what that actually does. Eh. You know what? It's fine. Someone will find the guy eventually, give him a good tasering, and they'll fix up the room. Occasionally, I do keep an eye on this. If I see the same prisoner acting up an awful lot, I tend to just lock them down. But this one, you can see from security, they've got a, l a tiny little penalty. How long have they actually been with us? There's seven days in our prison, and that's their first stepping out of line. It's grand. Uh, they've already got some punishment and reform underway. They'll they'll be grand. I think the best plan here is maybe not mix the supermax with this population. These are these are nice, gentle folks who only do a little bit of murderage. So we'll just uh, buy the land to the right, and then we'll have all of our supermax people over here. Uh, no, we're going to need a little bit more space than that. Oh, game is not like that. I almost feel tempted to sell this prison off so we have enough money. Just take the money and build a second prison so that we won't have that problem, but... Nah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we're going to leave this one go. We're going to... I think we're just going to lock all the prisoners in their cells and... show feed through the slot and just leave it at that, and hopefully they don't go insane. Uh, let's wall that in first, though. We've decided to do a little bit of a cleanup as we get into the construction over here, which goes very, very slowly. Oh, which reminds me, deployment-wise, we're going to make this super max only. We don't want them to using this as a reception for something else. Uh, they were getting the, this, instead of using this reception, they were crossing the road to use this one. I have no idea why. I thought it would be closer come, you know, closer come, closer serve type of thing. Anyway, we're doing a massive shakedown because, well, we want to mop up this little quest that was given in, under the grant section, so we might as well just knock it out. All they want us to do is remove the supply of stolen tools and stolen weapons. We just got to search 7,554 places because we have so many prison cells, so many prisoners, and so many things that need searching. We've only got 125 guards. I hired an extra 25 guards just to speed this along. Now, I have cut back on the amount of builders we've got to 100. Like, we had 200 workmen, but I've cut it back to 100 because the game just is not working as fast as it could. They seem to be stuttering a bit, and the delivery of material seems to be far slower. I think we're sort of hitting that scalability issue where we've scaled up enough that the game is sort of chugging just a tad. But we're going to try and get in just 5 to 10 of the maximum security. What are they called again? Supermax. SM Supermaxes. Or maybe get a legendary prisoner. That would be fun. Let's grab a legendary prisoner and then a sniper to shoot them when they try and escape. This here is going to be our early version of Supermax. It's basically a replica of this 
except we've changed the jo doors out for something a little bit more substantial. In fact, let's turn this, let's deploy these now. We might as well start turning them into cells. Before we bring that legendary prisoner in, though, we've got four armed guards on patrol down here. We've got a couple more armed guards doing the twitchy twitchy right there. And then we're going to put ourselves someone in that guard tower, uh, which is a sniper. I don't know if they need to rest, so what are you going to do? You're supposed to go straight for the sniper tower, unless they go straight for the armory and then the sniper tower. Where are you going, buddy? Okay, they go to the armory, then they go across the road, avoid the trucks, and they should pop over all the way to Sniper Tower. I notice I've made these gates just whatever, we don't care, they're saloon doors. Your job is if this guy goes a little bit crazy, which I'm betting he will because they're legendary, uh, you just shoot him. So it solves our problems, we just get paid when he comes along. Anyway, legendary prisoner. Um... High-risk prisoners that are too dangerous for other pr prisoners are offered from time to time. Be warned, there is a reason they pay highly. They are hardened criminals that no other facility wants to take. Well, in that case, we shall take them. Uh, when will they be around? One o'clock in the morning, so we've got nine hours to wait. Uh, let's speed up time a bit. And, uh, <laughs> though uh, time doesn't speed up so much anymore. A little bit too many things running around the place. Here they come now. Let's see what type of legendary they are. Oh, assuming they actually brought the legendary, and they're going to be mixed in with all the other prisoners. Hopefully they go to the Supermax section. Um, I'm not seeing anyone in any weird coloured uniform there. How about you? Nope, nothing. There we go. You, maximum security. Yep, Supermax. I think Supermax for you. Yep, they're the legendary one. Fine, okay, legendary. Uh, we're going to... Wow, your estimated reoffense chance is 97%. I was somehow expecting it to be higher. Um, alright, biography, we will set you to supermax. Everything over here is set to supermax. Yep, so you should get dragged over there for processing. Excellent. Uh, any guards want to come along and process this guy? How's the searching going? You didn't even try and smuggle in any weapons? That's, uh, kind of sad. Okay, let's move him into a cell. He hasn't shanked anyone yet. Oh, that door has to go. Damn it. Uh, dismantle. I put in that door for a different reason. Uh, yeah, but once that's gone, our sniper should have a clear line of sight all the way down to the end. Now, uh, actually, now that you're here, I think we'll make a quick change to you. Actions. Uh, we'll put you in lockdown. Permanently. There we go. That means you just stay in your cell and we never let you out. Uh, we can feed you through the door, hopefully, and uh, that should be that. Excellent. For our next delivery, we're just going to get four Supermax prisoners. Uh, why not? We'll grab all the Supermax ones, chuck them in here. I want to get about ten of them and then see if we can hold them without things going horrifically wrong. Uh, I've also tried to make some solitary prisons. Oh, you know what? You should be... You should get rid of the lock open on these ones. Uh, maybe they'll work better as prisons that way. Welcome, welcome. Now, where are you? Uh, you're around here somewhere, right? Oh, yep, yeah, you gotta drop off. Where'd they go? Please tell me you've got some prisoners. Ah, there you are. Excellent. We'll have a quick look at these newbies. We'll chuck them into their cells and then, uh, eternal solitary. Where'd the other guy go? Uh, there was a legendary prisoner here. I thought we... Huh? How did you move cells? Well, I suppose that's why he's legendary, right? I think what we'll do is solitary permanently. We've got a solitary cell here and here. I think we take them in as normals, and then we just solitary confinement the lot of them. That seems like the best way to handle this. Oh, wow, we can take more supermaxes. You know what? We're just going to stop with that for a bit. We'll go back to uh, this until we get up to 800. We've got a bunch of parolees that need filling, refilling and all that. Give me a minute to sort these out and solitary the lot. Damn it, Stubbs just killed a guard. They were transferring him to solitary... And he basically got tased, and then it just did nothing to him. Um, right, armed guards are en route. All right. Uh, oh, buddy. Be careful. Oh, my God, that's two tasings. Three tasings. Four. Okay, he's down. Uh, oh, we never made a hospital. You know, that's fine. Well, he killed his first guy. I mean, he's only been here 24 hours. Legendary lives up to the rep. I mean, seriously. 
So, we now have five Supermax prisoners, all conf confined to solitary, where they do have some stuff to play with. The doors should never open. Their food... Oh, except for the janitors to go in. That's got to be the most dangerous job in the world. Um... Right. So they still have to have their cells cleaned. There's no way to avoid that, unfortunately. Oh, my God. You are the bravest man. <laughs> Is there any way to stop the janitors going in, I wonder? Uh, we'll have to hook up those doors to servos at the end, but uh, I think that would be the plan. Just to put in Supermax prisoners, get them into normal cells, and then immediately transfer every single one of them to solitary confinement forever. That seems like we will have to drop off food through their hatches when the time comes, but... It does mean that if they go nuts, we should only have to do it one at a time, no riots, no anything, and it should be the most cost-efficient way of doing things. That's sort of the plan. I know there's been some casual mentions of, like, I'm doing horrific stuff here, but it's not that it's, not that it's horrifying. It's like the snitches thing. What is the financial incentive to keep the snitches alive? Um, if we keep the snitches alive, what then? We have to make our own special wing for them, which costs us money. We then have to keep them protected in there, which also costs us more guards and money. If we just let them get killed, it doesn't actually cost us anything. So it's really just a more cost-efficient way of running the game. There's no financial... In the game has not given me any incentives to protect them. In fact, it has given me incentives to let them die. I'm not really sure what I'm missing here. Maybe there's something I'm supposed to be doing to protect them, or it would help the game in some way. I just... It hasn't made those incentives clear to me, so... Death for the lot of them just seems like a much simpler thing, and for locking these people in solitary confinement forever, it just seems more cost-efficient. I don't have to worry about them breaking out, I don't have to worry about them killing guards, uh, we do have to bring them food, which is a negative, that means they, you know. But barring that, it does seem like an easier way to keep them under control, though I will have to find out how much it's worth to keep prisoners in solitary, or how much supermax prisoners are cost, or are worth. Like, how much money do we get for keeping them? I'll have to start doing a lookup. Like, we'll bring in one Supermax prisoner, see how much of a prisoner grant we get from that, comparing that to medium security ones. Medium security ones require far less guards, and they have the patrol uh, parole opportunities, which also gives more money. I'm not really seeing the benefits of taking on Supermax prisoners, is what I'm saying. I'll give it a go, but that's only because we've sort of... Well, we've kind of mastered the whole... Well, maybe not mastered, but we've gotten the hang of doing medium security quite well. Very few fights, uh, no riots at all. I think we had one big fight where about, ooh, 10 people ended up in hospital, but that's it. Maybe 15. Whatever, I wasn't really paying too much attention. And barring the snitches, this works out pretty well. Anyway, I, I'm not really sure where else to go from here by throwing on more difficulty modifiers. Because from what I can see, we've kind of got this bit down. Plenty of cash in the bank, but uh, I'm open to suggestions. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I, uh, oh, there we go. There's a kickoff. And, yep, tasers to the rescue. Anyway, I'm going to cut it out there. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Oh, look, another parole lawyer murdered by their own fountain pen. Seriously, if the parole lawyers would stop bringing fountain pens in here, maybe more of them would still be alive. Just bring crayons. I mean, it won't be as pretty, but if you bring crayons in there, your life expectancy goes way up. Just like, way, way up.